Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I have had four dreams over the last two evenings, and they scared me. And I'm also going to talk about 14 warnings concerning food shortage. But first, the four dreams that scared me. Now, I know you probably want me to tell you the dreams, but there's some personal things in them that I think I've also been warned of. So I'm not going to tell you the dreams, but I'm just going to tell you I'm upset. Um, I've had some sleepless nights the last couple of nights because of it. But I'm going to tell you what I think the dreams were saying because I think it relates to you. Okay, first, I think it is saying that the Spirit of Prophecy Church is in trouble. It's in trouble over low attendance. And I think that's saying that I need to start doing what I can to boost the attendance. Second thing, that also means that Prophecy Club is about to be in financial trouble. Um... But I don't think it's just anything that is going on with the Prophecy Club or Prophecy Club. I think that America is about to be in trouble. It's, I think just God, is, at least what, what I'm hearing here, is that all these things we've been talking about and been warning about now for 30 years, many of them are about to start. I don't mean like in the next few minutes. I mean not even in the next few days, but probably in the next few, next few months. And I'm pretty confident to say this year. Also, that the Johnson specifically are about to be affected financially. And I am considering selling a car, uh, just, just to be honest about it. Um, as you can tell, I'm upset about it. I, 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 uh, you know, the, 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 the Bible says that we're supposed to listen to the still small voice. Even more than dreams or visions and angels, the, the, the still small voice. And it's not even totally what I got in the dreams, but what the dreams have done, I mean, I got up, I went to my prayer closet this morning at well, some four o'clock. And I've been upset over this thing. Well, especially the last 24 hours. Spend some good time in my prayer closet praying, and I can tell you right in here. I think what it's saying is that I've got to start pushing the Spirit of Prophecy Church more. Prophecy Club, we've got to watch every P and Q. That's also speaking for us, the Johnsons perfectly, my, I mean personally, my, my family, and also brace yourself. Now, the part that relates to you is I think all of this. I don't think it's coming because of anything we've done wrong. I don't think it's coming from anything you've done wrong. I think it's coming from the apparently half of the population in America that has chosen to sin and turn away from Jesus. And so we have to bear the brunt of their mistakes. But I want to invite you to the Spirit of Prophecy Church. If you live any place in the DFW area, let me please invite you to come and at least visit the Spirit of Prophecy Church, but I'm going to encourage you to seriously consider coming to it. And here's why. This is the location. So here is 75, everybody in the DFW area knows what I'm talking about, Parker Road. Uh, that's not correct. That's Parker Road. This is Park Road. I have to make a change in that. Boom, boom. There, I made a change. Park Road. And then this is Cavenue. This is where the church is. And right over here is Whataburger, and we're in a little strip mall right. That's Whataburger. We're right here. 2540K Avenue, right behind the Whataburger. And I encourage you to come at 10, uh, 1030. You'll walk into Coffee and Donuts and be greeted. It, this is a church for prophecy students. If you are a prophecy student, if you really believe Jesus is coming soon, if you want to know more about Bible prophecy, then this is the church that I invite you to come to. Now, you may be saying, okay, so what do you believe in? Okay, well, here's the real simple truth. I, when Prophecy Club, when Spirit of Prophecy Church first started back in 1998, I thought I was at a real disadvantage because I never went to Bible college. Um, my wife and I have talked about it many times. Now looking back, 
I think it was actually a real advantage because if you go to Bible college, then you learn what that group says the Bible says or this group. You learn that denomination's viewpoints. This is what we believe. Since I didn't go to Bible college, I just got me a King James Bible, (laughs) read it, and followed it. And if you show me something in the Bible, uh, I'll read it and follow it with best of my ability. That, that's what I think churches ought to be. However, next thing is, it's a real church. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Well, are all churches real churches? No. <laughs> As a matter of fact, most of them, I'm going to say like upwards of 90% of the churches are legally, in a court of law, not a church. What? No, no, they're not. The story on that was in 1945, Lyndon Baines Johnson was running for political office and he was running against a pastor. He wanted to shut the pastor up, so he managed to finagle them to put in a couple of lines into a bill that they put before Congress called the Johnson Amendment. And in that, it shut the churches up. Long story short, churches can't speak out now on public issues like Church can't say, I don't want that girly joint right across the street from an elementary school. Can't do that. Churches can't speak out. They are now part of a 501c3 government corporation. How do you know if your church is a government corporation? Well, does your church have board members? That means it's a 501c3. Uh, Who started your church? Was it board members that went out to a Bible college and hired themselves a pastor? most cases, that's correct. That means that the board members hire and fire the pastor. That means the board members tell the pastor what he's going to preach, what he's going to believe, what he's not going to preach. And since most of them put their own sweat and blood, their own money into building that building, they are more, sorry sorry to say, not all of them now, not all of them. Some are really, really men and women with God. But some of them, are more interested in seeing money put in the plate so they can make that mortgage payment than they are preaching the Word of God that tends to run people off. So we're a real church. Second thing I want to say is, if it's a 51c3, the board hires them. If it's a real church, the man and woman or man or woman of God is the one in charge. No, I do not, Leslie, I do not report to any board, okay? We report to God. Next thing is, we do not believe in a pre-trib rapture. Your 501c3s, most of them do. Also, we are King James only. That's the only version we read. That's the only version we believe in. And we've got several DVDs at watchprophecyclub.com on that to give us lots and lots of information back up while we're right. The other churches are just any Bible version. Also, um, we teach the whole Bible because some of them avoid prophecy. We're not just positive and encouraging. (laughs) We try to be, but they are positive only. We want to bring the church, or the truth. And, you know, Leslie said from the pulpit here last couple of Sundays, you know, when we first started the church, we thought, oh, if you start a church, you start bringing truth, people will come. Wrong. They don't. They don't like the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They want to hear what they want to hear. And they walk in and they expect the church to cow down and to bow to what they want. And if they don't get what they want, they leave. Uh, God gave me a dream a number of years ago and said that, that his people beat the pastors and they beat the churches with their checkbook. In other words, if they don't like what they get, they leave and they take their money with them. So consequently, the churches that are really preaching the truth struggle and, frankly, Spirit of Prophecy Church and Prophecy Club struggle. You know, we, we but, uh, again, the, the audible voice of God told me that when those prophecies, I gave your wife, began to come to pass, people from all directions began to turn and listen to your ministry. Personally, I suspect strongly we'll see that start happening this year. And I think that's part of it, but I also think it's part of the trouble coming to America. Now, it's... We, we've heard the Coverstone was told censorship is coming. Really, really hard censorship, like, like we've never seen censorship before. So 
if they remove prophecy club, and that may be what is about to cause this, okay? We may see prophecy club removed. I, I'm, I'm trying to choose my words so the filters won't catch me. So if that happened, we didn't disappear. You can go to prophecyclub.com right here, prophecyclub.com, download the app. Here's what you want to look for. This is the uh, emblem or the, the logo. You'll see it on your App Store or Google Play. And on here, there's no censorship. They can't take us off. We own it. There's no charge for it. Here's the way it works. Phone rings. You're in the middle of watching or listening to it. Then it pauses and restarts. You can download audio or video. So I encourage you to visit Spirit of Prophecy Church. Now, let me get to 14 warnings, and I'm probably not going to be able to get to just a few of them. And if I have time, maybe I will continue them tomorrow. Okay, so I'm just, I'm, I'm going to let you pause and read that because that's, I don't have time to read all those. But there's a lot of really good information in those warnings and also this too. Pause and read those. Those are some prophecies we think that are just about to come to pass. Also, I'm going to let you pause and read this. This is a list of the summary of active prophecies. It means these are the prophecies in the order we think that of their importance. In other words, when you got 34 prophecies saying something's coming, that's a highly that's more than two for gasoline. So we got 34 prophecies saying suitcase nukes are coming. That's a virtual guarantee. Guarantee. 34? See, the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let a thing be established. Now, several people emailed me and said, Stan, you need to qualify that. Well, here's the qualification. It's supposed to be two or three witnesses you believe are from God, not just a bunch of knuckleheads. But they got to be two or three witnesses from God. And when you believe they're from God, then you can count on it. Now, this is, I'm getting into what I want to get to today, and that is food shortage. Chris Reed, and as I've said before, I don't always agree with everything every person says. The things that I believe are from God, I put on the program. Anyway, Chris, Chris Reed, now you can pause and read all of those, and I'd recommend it. What I want to point to you today is he saw newspaper headlines that said the perfect storm subtitle, Inflation Reaches New High. My opinion, that is part of the reason I was given these four dreams. Food shortage crisis as wheat and bread imports are at a stalemate. So that tells us that as inflation gets high, then there's something also like the Moloch guys uh, start cutting off our food. We've already seen that. We've covered that many, many times. All right, let's go on to the next one. In this one that is a collection of dreams, it is basically saying purchase non-perishable food now. So this lady says, okay, I do a cooking show. I'm not a prophet. She says, I was sound asleep. The Lord woke me up, began speaking to me and saying, there's going to be a downfall of the economy. Purchase non-perishable foods now. Now, I believe she heard from God. I don't think that she just cooks that up for her cooking show. But that's one thing that says, okay, there's one person saying there's a food shortage coming. And I explain that. if you, I, I show you how to cook your bread and everything from Joseph Kitchen if you go to this one. It's, on, it's up on the websites. Uh, it looks like that. Go and watch it. Anyway, let's keep on. I recommend you go to josephkitchen.com. And here's why. Because first step is you need to get the wheat and then the wherewithal to grind that to flour. Here's the way it works. You get a wheat grinder. You put the wheat berries in. Push a button. 30 seconds later, you have flour. Put that into a bread machine with five or six other ingredients. Push a button. Two hours, 40 minutes later, you're going to have a nice hot loaf of bread. And this is what the loaf of bread looks like. And I actually cooked those loaves of bread. I actually ate that bread. Um, I typically have a slice for breakfast and lunch. Anyway, so this is the, the wherewithal to make the bread. And then you decide how much food you want. So you go to step number two, the slice, supplies. I'd recommend you order more than what you need. Now, most of your places out there, you're talking nine, ten thousand dollars $10,000 to feed one person for one year. At Joseph Kitchen, you can do it with wheat 
for in the ballpark of about a thousand dollars per person for a year. So do you want to spend nine or ten thousand to feed one person one year, or about a thousand bucks? And it's wholesale. Uh, it's wholesome. I believe I've lost uh, some weight, and also my blood pressure is lowered as a result of eating it. All right. So let's go on to the next dream then. Dana Coverstone. This is only part of it. October 2021. In the dream, it was clear a clear night with a full moon. I was walking down a wet road in the middle of the desert. There were four digital billboards, two on each side about 25 feet apart. Each had a roof protecting them from the drizzling rain. Wolves were how, how, howling. Now, I'm going to read all of it. It takes me 15, 20 minutes to read it. I'm just going to get to the point. The first video was a grocery store with armed soldiers standing guard out front. People were waiting in lines to go inside. Only five people were allowed in at a time. Soldiers recorded on an orange notebook items purchased. People were wearing coats, gloves, hats, and I could see their breath. He said he saw in the second video multiple deaths. Showed people in green vans marked corner and blue letters pulling up to a house with a large red, large red X-2 on the door, meaning two dead inside from some kind of a virus. That is not what we've seen yet. And then the next one, martial law lockdowns, no gasoline. Third video was reporting both the east and west coasts were under FEMA management due to inclement weather patterns that had destroyed some major interstates and roads. And the next one says direction for the church where the Pentecostals full of fire, spirit, and faith. He says, I need you full of my fire. Now, I'm going to do something I hadn't planned to do. I'm going to jump down to show you something that confirms what he was just saying. So this says, uh, this is Jimmy and Patty Travato. We were having a meeting in Baltimore, a Power of Jesus crusade, and she came up to me and she says, I had a dream. I think I need to tell you. I'm going to read the dream. Then the next day she came to me because a three-day crusade. She says, by the way, that dream I told you yesterday that I had back several months ago, I had it again exactly in detail last night, meaning she had the dream twice. Demetri used to say if he wanted to know for certain if the dream was of God, he asked God to give him the dream a second time. Get it the second time, it's confirmed. All right, this is what the dream is talking about. May 2004. In my dream, there had been a nuclear explosion in the Baltimore-Washington Baltimore corridor. I'd quickly grab clothes, a tent, money, a little food, and stuff them in our car. I'd used the back roads to get out of Maryland. My daughter was in the car behind me with the rest of her kids. My husband was going to meet us at the campground. I was driving down a familiar highway in Pennsylvania. We are going to a campsite, campsite near Penn State College. The highway was jam-packed in both directions. Traffic had come to a total stop due to some small accidents. I got out of the car and climbed up past the shoulder boulders under the trees to sit in the cool shade. It was a nice spring winter or weather, and the highway was filled with people in panic trying to get to the mountains while other people are in panic leaving the mountains to travel down southeast. Everyone was in a panic. I think this is what we're talking about, okay? Four black helicopters came from over the mountain range, started buzzing up and down the road. Two left to the south, one kept circling the area I was in, while the fourth got out a bullhorn. They announced to all of us that martial law had taken effect and that we were traveling illegally. Everyone was required to return to their homes or face arrest and confiscation of their vehicles. We thought, well, how can we go back home? The lanes of traffic on the highway are not moving. The man in the southbound pickup truck started screaming black back at the black helicopters. He incited others to throw rocks at it and even wanted people to turn over vehicles and block the highway to stop the people from going on. A military person dressed in black with gray, dark gray appeared at the helicopter's door and shot the man and two others dead. Other people in the air were forced to lay the bodies alongside the highway and move the vehicles onto the shoulder of the highway. This paralyzed the people. No one really understood just how different things were about to be. The circling helicopter swooped down and a young military man jumped to the road out of the northbound lane. He was quite friendly and gave new orders, saying tourists should proceed to their destination. We were told we could visit 10 days or less, then we were required to return to our primary residence. He told us we'd want to go home anyway because we would not be able to buy food anywhere else except prepackaged foods still available in gas stations. All grocery markets were closed. The only people that were reported to work were emergency workers. 
Sound familiar? The gas stations were allowed to remain open to allow people to get home, and then no one was to leave. Then the scene changed, and I was home again. It was 20 minutes drive from my Baltimore. My family and I were watching a TV news conference on how people were coping with the grocery stores being closed for the last three weeks. A military woman dressed in the same outfit as the man in the helicopters came to our front door. She made sure we were home, then put something sticky on our door, to which uh, later uh, uh, they would affix the government papers. They didn't want these papers put in the mailbox. She handed us a large envelope of papers. The contents included a mandatory appointment at the school. We were registered to vote. If you missed the appointment, you were delayed getting food for your family. Most people had eaten all the extra food, and they were all required to share what they had. Food was the primary problem everyone had on their minds. The government didn't want anyone to have any food left in their house. Only a person sharing food that they had stored up would have it all taken away and go to jail. When I arrived at the place of voting, only a few people were allowed in at a time. Tables were set up, and when we vote, we had to go to the alphabetized table and state our name. We had to provide proof of who we were and how many people lived in our home. They confirmed this information with a computer. Anyone not registered would have to go to the sports stadium to get their paperwork in order to get food. No more Walmart food. <clears throat> Each family was issued something that looked like WIC checks. Each family was assigned to one grocery store in which we could shop. The checks had food items listed and how many worth we could buy. For example, two 16-ounce cans of vegetables, one pound meat, six fruit items. We could only buy at our assigned store. Everyone could only shop if you were the registered shopper and only one person per family could be registered to shop. Each person had one certain day in which they could shop. I was at my assigned store. There were only a few people allowed in at a time. Once the approved people were in the doors, we were, the doors were locked until the maximum time was over. The next group was allowed in, and I only had 15 minutes to shop for the listed items on my check order, and only five minutes for the clerk to process everything. <clears throat> Each hour, only three groups of people were allowed to enter. The ensure, to ensure the appropriate behavior, there were military dress guards with machine guns at various places in the store. Some people were assigned to shop in the middle of the night. We could choose whatever brand of canned goods or meats, but the amount was very limited. My grocery cart was only one-third full and it had to last us all week until the next weekly appointment when they were given another week-type check with a limited amount of food listed on the purchase. Each person's check was commensurate with the number of people living in their legal residence. One could buy all the paper goods and cleaners they liked. As I was paying for the allowed food, another customer became irate with a little amount of food he was being allowed to get. He started yelling at one of the soldiers. The soldier slowly pointed his gun at him, pushed back his helmet, and stared at him a long time. The soldier, speaking in Spanish accent, said, Don't be so upset. This will not do you any good. He pointed at a military vehicle in the parking lot and said, Look, look your Russian overtakers have had to live like this all of their lives. Now it's your turn. And the dream ended. Toward the end of the dream, I knew that the nuclear attack was not a single attack, but many small attacks, probably suitcase nukes. It was accomplished through a Russian-Spanish-speaking country alliance. I woke with a very clear knowledge of how easily we will cooperate with a few government to get just a little food. I saw how voting registration would be used to organize food distribution. I saw the entire dream again, shockingly crystal clear, as I was given it the first time, meaning it was confirmed. Now, I want to jump to another one. <clears throat> I got a lot of them that can confirm this. 2020, Byron Searle. In this vision, the radio talk show host became very serious in his tone and stated that it was being reported that several large cities were in lockdown. People were being ordered to stay inside their homes or apartments. I saw what looked like a riot taking place, parking lots jam-packed with people, vehicles, cars, doors left wide open. People all over were wildly running about. I watched people running as fast as they could in almost every direction, screaming and shouting hysterically, hysterically as I was observing complete and utter chaos and hysteria. Not one person was calm. All were running about yelling and screaming and crying. I asked, what's going on? The local National Guard were planning a martial law order, advising everyone that they would have to stay in their homes. Sound familiar? 
He told me that nearly all of the food, the store shelves were empty of food, water, and other goods. He said that the people in the stores were acting like crazed rabid animals, throwing cans of food at each other and stealing each other's carts. I went in, and it was complete chaos and wild fighting. People at the checkout lines were yelling and screaming at the cashiers because their debit and credit cards were not working in the machines, and they had no cash. I'm telling you, you should have some gold and silver. You should have some cash on hand, too. People began to buy, bypass the registered and run out of the stores without paying for the food in their carts. I saw people attacking people who were running it with food, waiting mobs of people, grabbed them, beat the people who were leaving the store with food, taking all of their food and leaving the people injured and lying on the ground. Shelves emptied minutes, pack of ravenous wolves and frenzy sharks fighting over the food. It was unbelievable to watch this take place. Everything in the store was totally destroyed. The doors pulled off the refrigerator and freezer sections, broken and thrown all over the floor. Shelving units pushed over, knocked down, broken up. There was no food left at all anywhere on any shelves. Everything was totally and completely wiped out. People began running back to the stock room in search of other food as the store was now cleaned out. They began tearing all the boxes and pallets apart looking for food. Many of the boxes contained paper products and cleaning supplies, but all that was thrown aside since the people were in a mad frenzy Looking for any boxes containing food items, I saw them find and take pet food just because it was food. They acted like they hit the jackpot when they found dog food. I saw some people from local churches with a terrified look on their faces crying because they were too late and there was nothing left. And I said, why, didn't you, why did you not prepare for this? After all, many watchmen have been warning for years of what was to come. People were fighting all over what People were fighting over what little remained. We began to hear gunshots. Bullets began flying everywhere. Many people were being hit. No one came to their aid that they were just left on the floor, bleeding, injured, or dying. Other people were taking food items from the people who had been shot, and they were running out of the store. The clerks had all run run away <clears throat> for the fear of their lives. People were taking anything that was not tied down that they could carry. Walmart was a war zone with gun battles in the store and parking lot. Many people were dead or dying. I saw people run into TJ Maxx and the dollar store to get some small food sections. People even ran into the movie theater and were fighting over the popcorn and candy. It seemed as if in one hour everything had gone from normal to complete and utter chaos and insanity. I was then reminded by the Lord how he had told me in times past over the past several years that this would be the case. The life as we knew it would change suddenly and that most were not prepared. I saw National Guard vehicles arriving. They quickly swooped in and shot anyone who was seen holding a weapon. The clampdown had begun, and no one would be allowed on the street. Everyone must stay inside or be shot. As the vision ended, I heard the Lord say, Why have you not prepared? Now, I can show you many of these. Look, I'll let you just look. Look at all of them. I got 14 of these. So what I would suggest you do, I suggest you do this. Go to josephkitchen.com. Personally, I think that that is wheat. I think that that is what fed the world for seven years during the famine of Joseph and the Pharaoh. I think that that's why Jesus calls us wheat, as in the wheat and the tares. Because the primary thing that a human body is really supposed to be eating is wheat. And the best wheat, in my opinion, is at Joseph Kitchen. That's the wheat that, matter of fact, I have certified that makes bread, good bread. Go there, get you some machines in order to make the bread. Then go over and order yourself some wheat. Comes in seven-gallon pails. It's nitrogen-infused, probably good for in the ballpark of 25 years. And... You know, it's true. You, you want to have enough for you and probably for your whole neighborhood. I mean, if you're sharing it around, who's going to take it away from you? You know, you're helping p- feed people, right? Anyway, I'd suggest you go get your machine package and also supplies. I'd also recommend you go to prophecyclubgold.com. Talk to them. Talk to them about getting the money out of your IRA or your 401k and getting it so it is all gold or silver backed or something like that. Now, remember... Um, 
Shane Warren said he heard the audible voice of God say that silver will skyrocket far more than gold. Get yourself prepared.